Part A. Listen to each word. Write the word you hear. One. I use my blender for making soup. Two. He uses this cloth to wash the dishes. Three. It's too hot in here. Let's turn on the fan. Four. I always turn the light off when I leave a room. Five. She uses her laptop to write emails. Six. Can you turn the radio up? I can't hear it. Seven. Do you miss skiing now that summer's here? Eight. They use the microwave for heating food. Nine. We can't stand jogging. We're so unfit. Ten. He used the remote control to rewind the movie. Eleven. 
Eleven. I turned on my laptop to write an email. Twelve. I'm looking forward to running the marathon. Thirteen. I've typed the report for you, but I won't print it out yet. Fourteen. I went to the washing machine to do the laundry. Fifteen. He likes watching basketball, and he plays it on weekends too. Sixteen. You use a refrigerator to keep food fresh. Seventeen. She absolutely loves diving, and she's very good at it. Eighteen. I sometimes use my smartphone for taking photos. Nineteen. I'm waiting to play badminton, but my friend's running late. Twenty. Jenny used the can opener to open a can of fruit. Part B. 
Listen to each conversation. Write as much information about the conversation. Conversation A. I'm here at the gadget show with Bilal, Harry, and Lauren, who are here to show us their fabulous new inventions. Hello, Bilal. What's your gadget for? You use this machine to clean your floors while you are out. It has a sensor that finds dirt, and it cleans up without human help. Thanks, Bilal. Harry, what do you have for us? This is for opening jars and cans. Many older or less able people find this difficult. Now they can do both jobs. At the touch of a button, it looks great, Harry. Lauren, what does your invention do? This amazing remote control is for keeping your home safe while you're away. You use it to lock or unlock windows and doors. Thank you, everyone. Now listen to the conversation. Again, I'm here at the gadget show with Bilal, Harry, and Lauren, who are here to show us their fabulous new inventions. Hello, Bilal. What's your gadget for? You use this machine to clean your floors while you are out. It has a sensor that finds dirt, and it cleans up without human help. Thanks, Bilal. Harry, what do you have for us? This is for opening jars and cans. Many older or less able people find this difficult. Now they can do both jobs at the touch of a button. It looks great, Harry. Lauren, what does your invention do? This amazing remote control is for keeping your home safe while you're away. You use it to lock or unlock windows and doors. Thank you, everyone. Now answer the question by completing the sentence. You have three minutes.
Conversation B. On Sports Update today, we welcome Olympic cyclist Kofi Oze to the studio. Kofi, congratulations on winning gold medals in two consecutive Olympics. Thanks. Tell us about your amazing Olympic journey. Well, after the last Olympics, I promised to coach the team. Then the directors arranged to meet me, and said they'd like me to be in the next Olympic squad. I was flattered, but thought I'd struggle to win another medal. I'm not getting any younger, but eventually I decided to go for it. I managed to do my training and was thrilled to win Olympic gold again. So, what's next for you? A family holiday. Then I hope to win the Tour de France next year. I can't wait to take part in more competitions. Best of luck, Kofi. It's been great talking to you. Now listen to the conversation. Again. On Sports Update today, we welcome Olympic cyclist Kofi Oze to the studio. Kofi, congratulations on winning gold medals in two consecutive Olympics. Thanks. Tell us about your amazing Olympic journey. Well, after the last Olympics, I promised to coach the team. Then. The directors arranged to meet me, and said they'd like me to be in the next Olympic squad. I was flattered, but thought I'd struggle to win another medal. I'm not getting any younger, but eventually I decided to go for it. I managed to do my training and was thrilled to win Olympic gold again. So, what's next for you? A family holiday. Then I hope to win the Tour de France next year. I can't wait to take part in more competitions. Best of luck, Kofi. It's been great talking to you. Now answer the question by completing the sentence. You have three minutes. Listening to problem solving.
Good evening, Brenda, George. If you're planning to get married, you want to make sure you're ready. I'm going to ask you five simple questions. If you answer the questions truthfully and agree, you're on the way to a very happy life together. Let's start with question one. Do you want children? No, not really. What? Oh, I mean, well, not right away, I guess. Question two. Do you like each other's families? Sure. Brenda's brother's great, and I like her folks, too. Yeah, I've got a great family. And my family? George, you have to admit some of them are a little weird. Why would you say that? Question one. What are Brenda and George planning on doing? Question 2. How does George feel about having kids? Question 3. How does Brenda feel about George's family? Now listen to part two. Question three. What responsibilities will each of you have in the home? You mean jobs around the house? George is a wonderful cook. Yeah, if you want to have barbecue steak every night. No, I think you'd do most of the cooking, wouldn't you? Well, I enjoy cooking. I mean, I could learn. But you would help with the housework, wouldn't you? Uh, my mom did all the housework when I was growing up. You're not marrying your mother, George. Question 4. What skills does George possess? Question 5. What type of environment was George raised in? Question 6. How does Brenda feel about chores? Now listen to part three. Question four. What would life be like with half as much money? Money's not that important, as long as you have food, clothing, shelter, and a really big TV. <laughs> Financial support is important, George. Think about the children. What children? Question five. How do you settle an argument? 
In the end, George usually sees things my way. Oh, well, as for that, you know, it's usually easier to agree than to argue. Question 7. How does George feel about arguments? Question 8. Overall, how does the couple differ? Listening to a daily life conversation. Hey, Alex. You won't believe this. I think I found a great summer job. I saw this ad in the Daily Times yesterday. Really? What kind of job? It's with an Australian travel company. They're looking for local tour guides. Tour guides, huh? What do you have to do? I bet it'll be hard work. You'll be working all hours. Maybe, but it says it's a fun summer job, especially if you enjoy meeting people from other countries. You know, I think the best thing about a job like this is you get to see all the sights and go in the museums for free. You know, to show the tourists around. Yeah, you'd be good at that. I mean, you know all the local places and their history and everything. Yeah, one of the main things they want is for you to be interested in your local area. That would be perfect for me. I mean, I know all the museums and... Yeah, you spend all your time in the museums. So what else does it say? You need to be self-motivated. That's no problem. And you have to be able to speak good English. Well, your English is really good. That's no problem either. So, you'll be traveling all over if you get the job, huh? I guess. It says, do you like to travel? So there must be a lot of travel. So, what do you have to do to apply? I have to write to the manager of the company and tell her why I'd be an outstanding guide. And I have to enclose a recent resume. So, are you going to apply? Yeah, sure. I mean, it says you get excellent pay. That's good. I wonder what the pay is. I have no idea. But it says you get benefits, too. Wow, it sounds great. Maybe the first thing you should do is go on the Internet and find out more about the company. You know, before you write to them. What's it called? Hmm, 18 plus travel. Never heard of it. I'll check it out. Do you need any help with your resume? I could help you write one. Oh, thanks. That would be great. Question 1. What was the woman up to yesterday? Question 2. What type of job did the woman find? Question 3. What type of person is the company looking for? Question 4. 
What does the woman need to do in order to apply? Question 5. What does the man suggest the woman do? Listening for information. Are your children grown up now, Laura? Oh, yes. Rachel is married and has three children. You're a grandmother? That's great. Congratulations. Thanks. But I don't see my grandchildren very much. Rachel and her family live in Paris. In Paris? Really? Yeah. Rachel is a reporter for an American newspaper. Her husband is a French photographer. They met when they were reporting on the same story. How romantic. And what about Grace? Is she married too? She was such a bright girl, always reading. No, she isn't married, but she has a boyfriend. And she still reads a lot. She's a librarian at the public library. So what about your children? Do you remember Roger? Of course I remember Roger. Is he in college? Oh, no. He graduated. Right now he's working as a translator, but what he really wants to do is write. That's not surprising. He was a very creative little boy, always drawing or writing stories. You're right. He'd like a job with more creativity. And what about Brian? He was more practical, if I remember correctly. Less of a dreamer. Brian is an air traffic controller in Florida. Really? Very interesting. Yeah, it's an interesting job, but stressful. Does his job require a lot of travel? Not really, but he has a lot of responsibility. I'm sorry, Laura. I have to run now. I'm late for my train, but I'm really glad I ran into you. Great to see you too, Rose. Give my regards to everybody. Question 1. What does Laura's first daughter do? Question 2. How did Laura's first daughter meet her husband? Question 3. What type of person is Laura's second daughter? Question 4. What type of person is the second woman's first son?
Question 5. What does the second woman's second son do? Question 6. What is the relationship between the two speakers? Listening to a news item. School says Hello Kitty Christmas Tree can stay. A math teacher at a high school in Maine, USA has been allowed to keep her pink Hello Kitty Christmas tree in her classroom. The tree was made from pink plastic and was adorned with Hello Kitty ornaments. The teacher, Catherine Gordon, had earlier been ordered by the school principal, Paul Butler, to remove it after he decided it was an inappropriate Christmas decoration. Mr. Butler explained to ABC News that he initially believed the tree did not fit with the way the school celebrated the different religious events happening at this time of year. He said, A concern was shared with me regarding an inconsistency with our balanced approach to holiday observances. Ms. Gordon said, I didn't think a pink Hello Kitty tree was offensive. It's a tree that's been put up in my classroom for years. She posted her story on Facebook and it quickly went viral. She wrote the tree had no religious symbols on it whatsoever, no crosses or angels, just pink Hello Kitties, and my students really enjoyed it. She added that society was becoming too worried about upsetting different people. She said, I feel that this is definitely a turning point in our society when everything offends everyone all the time. It just sucks the joy out of everything. She told the local newspapers that it just seems that in our quest to be tolerant of everything, we've become intolerant of everything. This is Michael reporting from Edmonton, Alberta.
That is the end of the listening test. You now have some time to check your answers.